Hello friends, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to talk about a very important concept in macroeconomics which is called crowding out effect. You often uh, find that when budget is being presented, right, and somehow if the government has kept the fiscal deficit beyond or above the uh, general norm which is expected by the market to prevail then market reacts adversely there are certain examples I can tell you here that how uh, way back in 2009 when fiscal deficit was kept a little higher around 5% uh, plus that led to adverse reaction of the stock market right the stock market fell sharply Similarly, in uh, the, the last budget as well, when fiscal deficit was kept little above the uh, uh, market expected fiscal deficit norm, market stock market reacted adversely. Now, why stock market, which is in some way representative of market, reacts adversely to the higher fiscal deficit there is a politics which one has to understand the politics is that when you expect government expenditure is going to rise or when you uh, observe that the government expenditure is going to rise right it is considered by the private sector that the share of the government sector is going to rise in the economy on the cost of their own share in the economy, share of the private sector, share of the private business sector. Right? Now, why is it the case that the private sector reacts adversely? Why is it the case that representative of market, representative of dominant private market, which is a stock market, reacts adversely to the higher fiscal deficit. It is the phenomena that prevails in the minds of those who are playing in the stock market, those who are making policies which guide such expectations. And it is that concept which we are discussing here, crowding out effect operates uh, behind such notions of uh, observing rise in government expenditure or rise in fiscal deficit as against their own interest as against the interest of private sector. So crowding out effect basically uh, talks about how government expenditure is related to private investment. Crowding out effect is fall in private investment due to rise in government expenditure. We don't have the notion of crowding in effect. We always talk about the crowding out effect because we believe that rise in government expenditure would lead to fall in private investment. And how does that operate is what we are going to discuss here. Now, uh, this crowding out effect is analyzed in the framework of ISLM model. And how do we analyze that? We analyze that using IS and LM curve. Right? Uh, let us see how uh, we can analyze crowding out effect. For that, uh, we need to bring here uh, the IS LM diagram, which is used to, which is used to uh, derive equilibrium level of income and interest rate. So here we have interest rate and here we have income. On the x-axis we are measuring income, on y-axis we are measuring interest rate. Right? Now, uh, you know IS curve is downward sloping. Right? And LM curve is upward sloping. Right now, the equilibrium occurs at point E naught, and that 
gives us y not equilibrium income and i not equilibrium interest rate. This is how we define, this is how we derive equilibrium level of income in ISLM model, right? Now we try to see that how does expansionary fiscal policy or rise in government expenditure lead to fall in private investment and then we can say that there is crowding out effect of government expenditure or rise in government expenditure or due to higher fiscal uh, deficit right so we have got this equilibrium level of income and interest rate here at equilibrium point e naught that means we have got equilibrium income and interest rate at which money market and goods market both are in equilibrium right now remember one thing that when we are talking about the crowding out effect we are assuming that monetary policy remains constant money supply remains constant there is no change in monetary policy if there is no change in monetary policy right that means rise in government expenditure is being financed by market borrowing right now with this assumption right we see uh, how does rise in government expenditure is going to lead to decrease in private investment right now uh, suppose if government expenditure rises by delta g so what would happen is curve will shift rightward the extent of rightward shift of is curve is defined or is measured by alpha g into delta g right so we shift is curve to the right hand side assuming uh, rise in government expenditure by alpha g and there is a given value of multiplied alpha g right and this is right uh, uh, delta g right so you get uh, rightward shifted is curve right which is parallel to the previous is curve and let me call this as is prime right now what do you see that equilibrium equilibrium occurs at point e1 right and that gives us output level y1 and interest rate i1 right now after expansionary fiscal policy which has happened because of rise in government expenditure is curve has shifted rightward now once the is curve is shifted rightward you get new equilibrium point e1 at which goods market and money market both are in equilibrium but that point is being characterized by what higher level of equilibrium income income has increased from y0 to y1 and in money market or in the economy as a whole you also find that the interest rate had gone up from i0 to i1 now if i ask you what happens to the level of private investment right uh, if you compare point e0 and e1 right now it's very easy to answer recall when we are deriving uh, equilibrium level of income and interest rate as per isla model we assume investment to be equal to i bar minus b i right now this is your investment functions that we have discussed that means if interest rate falls private investment rises if interest rate uh, rises private investment falls now what has happened here the interest rate has gone up when the interest rate has gone up what do you expect in the market uh, 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 with respect to the uh, private investment the private investment is going to fall and how much would be fall in private investment here delta i which would be negative that means there is fall in private investment that would be equal to b into b into delta small i which measures rise in interest rate right so given minus value of b and positive value of uh, change in interest rate we get total change in investment to be delta i and it is negative that means the investment or the private investment private total investment has fallen now what do you observe here 
that rise in government expenditure by delta G has led to fall in private investment. Right? Now, is it the case that fall in private investment is exactly equal to delta G? No. If it was so, if it was so that fall in private investment is exactly equal to rise in government expenditure, then aggregate demand would not have changed, right? And therefore, your equilibrium income would have remained at Y0. However, we are observing that now we are at point U in equilibrium, which is characterized by higher equilibrium level of income. Now, this higher equilibrium level of income, right, indicates that fall in private investment is less than rise in government expenditure and that is why there is net rise in there is net rise in autonomous components of aggregate demand and therefore uh, the, the, there has been positive uh, change in equilibrium level of income now this is the case of what you call partial crowding out effect partial crowding out effect why i am calling it partial crowding out effect that it is not the private investment is not falling to the extent of full value of rising government expenditure but only part of rising government expenditure and that is why it is called partial crowding out effect right so what did we learn we learn here that when government expenditure rises given this normal sloping lm curve and normal sloping is curve and you know what are the factors which determine the slope of lm curve and slope of is curve that if government expenditure rises private investment falls and the explanations for fall in private investment is rooted through money market right when income rises when income rises due to rise in government expenditure to the extent of e not a assuming interest rate is not changing okay is at uh, interest rate remains at i not and government expenditure rises or income rises right e not a right so income rises by alpha g into delta g assuming rate of interest remains the same recall from keynesian uh, model of income determinations where rise in income is exactly equal to multiplier into rising autonomous components of aggregate demand and here autonomous components of aggregate demand is delta g so that is a rise in income however money market and goods market are interdependent that is what we discussed in isla model right given this interdependency right when income rises due to rise in government expenditure that leads to rise in money demand we know money demand is written as l is equal to ky minus hi right so when income rises in money market money demand rises we are assuming no change in money supply we are assuming no change in money supply in that circumstance in that circumstance what will happen money demand rises money supply is constant that would lead to uh, what you call uh, more uh, sale of bonds which will lead to uh, fall in the price of bonds and that would lead to rise in rate of interest and when rate of interest rises your investment in goods market is function of rate of interest investment falls right investment falls and therefore whatever uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the amount of income that we observed due to rise in government expenditure some part of that gets offset by fall in uh, uh, private investment which happens due to rise in interest rate and this is called partial crowding out effect means rise in government expenditure lead to some part of uh, fall in private investment and fall in private investment happens only to the extent that there is a, a, a positive net rise of uh, income or there is what do you call net rise of income is positive right so uh, now remember the extent of change in investment right fall of course due to rise in government expenditure the extent of 
fall of private if there is no fall of private there is no crowding out effect right so the extent of fall of private investment due to rise in government expenditure would depend upon would depend upon the value of b and to what extent delta i changes right now uh, uh, suppose delta i we are assuming to remain constant right if higher is the value of b right the same rise in interest rate would cause more fall in investment right and if value of b is very low value of b is very low then the same rise in interest rate would cause less fall in private investment so private investment fall due to rise in government expenditure is not merely determined by the magnitude of rise of government expenditure but also to what extent your investment is sensitive to change in interest rate right if investment is let us say completely insensitive to rate of interest in that situation your investment remains unchanged and there is nil crowding out effect on the other hand if the value of b is very high if the value of b is very high in that situation what will happen right the same rise in interest rate would cause more fall in investment right and as you know that value of b is the one which determines the slope of is curve right higher is the value of b more flatter is the is curve right and less effective would be the fiscal policy remember given the slope of lm curve right given the slope of lm curve right higher is the uh, or uh, what you call higher is the slope of is curve uh, uh, what you call more effective is the fiscal policy and lower is the slope of is curve uh, less effective is the fiscal policy right so it is the value of b uh, which is which determines the slope of is curve that per se plays role to what extent your investment will fall due to rise in government expenditure right similarly given b it is the delta i which is going to decide how much your investment will rise or fall right now assume that b remains constant and delta i is very high due to rise in uh, government expenditure and therefore due to rise in government expenditure there is rise in income right so so let us say interest rate rises more due to rise in income which happens due to rise in government expenditure in that situation your fall in investment would be higher right similarly if uh, given b if delta i is very less right that means interest rate rises very less due to rise in uh, equilibrium income which happens due to rise in government expenditure in that scenario what will happen fall in investment would be less right now what will determine how much your investment or how much your uh, this delta i would change that is determined by the value of h that is determined by the value of h if h is very high if h is very high the change in interest rate due to change in income due to change in government expenditure right would be less and when h is very small then i would change more due to rise in uh, equilibrium income which happens due to rise in government expenditure and in that scenario the fiscal policy would be less effective now the value of h is the one which determines the slope of lm curve right if value of h is very high what will happen the slope of lm curve would be very less as we know by discussing the factors which affect the slope of lm curve that higher is the value of h lower is the slope of lm curve lower is the value of h higher is the slope of lm curve right that means that means higher is the value of h higher is the value of h right what will happen fiscal policy will be more effective because rise in government expenditure would lead to rise in income but rise in income would lead to little bit rise in interest rate right and when there is little bit rise in interest rate 
okay there is less fall in private investment and therefore crowding out effect is not very high though it, rather it is very less similarly if the value of h is very low then the same rise in income due to rise in government expenditure would lead to would lead to what you call higher rise in interest rate because the value of h is very low right which means the lm curve would be close to vertical and or will be very steeper right and what will happen in that situation that the rate of interest would rise more and when rate of interest rises more private investment falls more given the value of small b and therefore crowding out effect would be more so how much will be the crowding out effect due to rise in government expenditure right in other words how much private investment will decline due to rise in government expenditure depends upon b and h in other words that depends upon slope of is curve and slope of lm curve right so this is what uh, we had to discuss as part of crowding out effect here particularly considering the uh, uh, expansionary fiscal policy right now can in this model can in this model crowding out effect be made nil or can we neutralize the crowding out effect of rise in government expenditure or expansionary fiscal policy yes there is a way and what is the way the way is that when government follows expansionary fiscal policy simultaneously there should be rise in there should be rise in money supply right that in other words that rise in government expenditure is not being financed by market borrowing rather it is financed by printing money right and once we are assuming that government expenditure or rise in government expenditure or higher fiscal deficit is being financed by monetizations or by printing money in that scenario your interest rate will remain unchanged right and when interest rate remains unchanged private investment which is sensitive to rate of interest also remains unchanged so that is the only situation in which we can neutralize the effect of rise in government expenditure on private investment right so we can see it here that let us say what is all uh, government expenditure increase and rise curve shifted rightward now right simultaneously let us say central bank also raises money supply in the economy what will happen lm curve will shift rightward and where are we settling down we are settling down at point a right at point a and that gives us what that gives us equilibrium level of income y2 equilibrium level of income y2 right so now when there is expansionary fiscal policy and simultaneously there is also expansionary monetary policy right that would lead to a shift of equilibrium point from e not to a which is where a is being characterized by what a is being characterized by right a combination of interest and income right interest rate i not and inter income y2 at which goods market and money market both are in equilibrium so when we are shifting from e not to a and that has happened because of what that has happened because of rise in government expenditure and also rise in money supply right and here at point a we do not see any rise in rate of interest and when there is no rise in rate of interest when there is no rise in rate of interest investment also does not fall and therefore crowding out effect uh, due to rise in government expenditure gets neutralized by following expansionary monetary policy so there is a way out through which rise in government expenditure uh can be supported by printing money and that will not hurt the private sector investment that will not hurt the private sector investment remember in this process we are assuming we are assuming that economy has got excess capacity economy has got many more unutilized uh uh, uh resources which can be used in production process in other words economy is 
below full employment and therefore we have got a scope of reaching to full employment right without raising the price level and without raising the interest rate in the economy right so this way you can have what do you call exp expansionary fiscal policy functioning without having crowding out effect i hope it is clear to you the uh, discussions on crowding out effect Thank you so much.